when the mind settles down, you have to protect it. It's so easily led away from its object of meditation. And think of all the effort you put into getting it to settle down. Then once it's there, don't throw it away. This requires that as you go through the day, you practice some restraint. And the way you look at things, the way you listen to things, restraint also in what you do and what you say. Because it's either things coming in from outside or things welling up from inside that are going to knock your concentration out of balance. And as I would have said, there are plenty of pleasures that don't interfere with the Dharma, but there are plenty that do. You have to be careful about which is which. You don't have to deny yourself all pleasures, but you find there are some things that if you indulge in the pleasure, it's going to be bad for the mind. And then you have to learn how to say no. That's what renunciation is all about. It goes together with restraint. They're similar things, but not quite the same. It's important that when you practice renunciation, giving up certain things, certain pleasures that you know are bad for the mind, don't think of it as deprivation. Think of it as opening the mind, freeing the mind from all the things that pull it around. Like the water buffalo in Thailand, they put a ring in its nose and tie a rope to the ring, and then when they really want it to go someplace, they just pull on the ring, and the buffalo has to go because the nose hurts so much. Well, if you're attached to certain things, your coffee has to be just this way, this has to be just that way, the food has to be just this way, the place you sleep has to be just that way. Those things have rings in you. You have rings in your eyes, rings in your ears, rings in your tongue, rings all over your body. And when these things change, they pull on you. You have no freedom at all. But if you can learn how to take the rings out, in other words, realize that your happiness doesn't have to depend on those things. You've got a better source of happiness inside. Then they can pull on the ropes as much as they want, but you don't have to go because the ropes aren't connected to you anymore. So when you find that you have to give up certain pleasures, you realize that these pleasures are getting in the way of your meditation, getting in the way of your practice. Think of it as an opportunity to gain some freedom. You're getting something. You're not losing something. It's an exchange. You're throwing away all those old rings which looked to be value. But then you realize, because those rings, even though they may be made out of gold, they're connected to ropes and they pull. You're much better off without them. People can pull and pull and pull on the ropes, but as long as nothing's connected to you, it doesn't have any impact on you. The ways of the world can pull on the ropes, but it doesn't have any impact on you because you've learned how to cut the rings. It's an opportunity for freedom.